Hello everyone, this is the BLAST tutorial for Bio 283 General Genetics with Professor Markstein. BLAST stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, and it's a method the bioinformaticians use to find similar sequences. Now, what does an alignment mean? Well, let's look at this example over here. We've got our first line that's got a bunch of gibberish and then the word potato in the middle. And potato is an English word. You can understand what it means, but to a computer, they all just look like letters. Well, let's say we want to search for the word potato. We have this on the second line. So the computer is going to search the, the word potato at the first position, then the second, then the third, on and on and on, until you see eventually it lines up and the word potato on the top is the same as the word potato on the bottom. That's essentially how BLAST works, except the algorithm is a bit more complicated than that. Essentially what it does is that it lines up two similar sequences or two similar uh, strings and finds ways that they're similar and lines them up in such a way that all of the similar parts are next to each other and that's how it finds similar sequences and you can think of it a bit like a Google search if you go to Google and you type in the word alignment you'll find the definition of the word alignment and it'll search for the word alignment in all different places on the internet now blast works using a kind of fuzzy alignment algorithm, meaning that even if you misspell it a little bit, it'll still give you the right answer. Notice how I totally misspelled the word alignment over there, and it still knows what I mean. So obviously Google and Blast work a little bit differently, but we're going to call this fuzzy alignment, meaning that even though it says something like, um, let's say there's a D over there, our alignment algorithm will still realize that we have to align it more or less like this, so that there will be a gap over here to account for mutations like indels and SNPs. So let's get started with BLAST. There are two types of BLAST that we care about, nucleotide BLAST and protein BLAST. And as we covered in class, nucleotide BLAST is much more relevant when we want to find the differences between species. Protein BLAST is a lot more useful when we want to find similarities between species because they tend to be much more conserved over time. So let's take an example from my lab. We study a multi-drug resistance and one of the proteins we care about is MDR50. So over here you can see that I have two files. Um, they're both FASTA files, FASTA, FASTA, however you pronounce it, and they're for MDR50. One of them is for the gene that's the nucleotide sequence. One of them is for the amino acid. That's the protein sequence. So let's open them up. And you can see how a FASTA file works is that it has the first line that starts with an arrow and it contains all sorts of information about it. And it'll say the gene ID. It'll say the type. It's a gene. It'll say the name is MDR50. This is for the gene FASTA file. For the amino acid FASTA file, you'll see that there's another ID the type is protein and it'll have the name over here MDR50 so these both refer to the exact same thing the only difference is one of them is nucleotides you can see ATCG over here and one of them is amino acid which is much more than ATGC now what BLAST will do is let's take a look at the nucleotide BLAST first we'll copy and paste our nucleotide FASTA file right into BLAST's search box. And what that'll do is it'll take our entire sequence and do that sort of alignment against all the known genomes that they have in their database. And it'll allow you to find similar proteins from the same organism or closely related organisms. So if you wanted to restrict your search, you could enter, you could enter specific organisms that you want. So if you only know that you want results from humans, you could just type homo sapiens. If you know that you only want results from nematodes, you could write C. elegans. If you only want results from fruit flies, you would write Drosophila melanogaster, so on and so on. But if we leave a blank, it'll search every single organism in its database. You push the blast button, and it submits the job. Now, um, because it has to search through so many organisms' databases, this might take a really long time, and the page is going to update, um, I think, once every, yeah, it says once every seven seconds now. When it finally finds the answer, it's going to give us the results, and we can wait around and see what happens. And it does take a pretty long time just because there's such a wide range that it's going to be searching. So these are our results, and look at this. 
it shows us all the different alignments that it's capable of finding. Because we had a gene sequence that we put in for this, a nucleotide sequence, we can see that our first alignment is one continuous line. Our first couple of alignments are like that. Then the next alignment has a little bit of a gap. And then after that, the alignments you see after that, you can see spaces in where the alignments know that there are gaps, but they're not quite sure how to align it otherwise. And using our inference from what we know in class, we can guess that these areas are probably intron regions or some sort of other homologous, homologous regions that have changed between organisms or between genes. So we can see that these regions over here are most likely conserved because they're probably exons, or in other words, functional domains that try not to change too much over time. And we can see that uh, the alignment scores over 200 means that these are pretty good matches. Let's go down to the results. So they give us all these different scores and they sort all the matches by score and the higher the match, um, the higher the score, the better the match is. So what you want to pay attention to is the max score, the identity percentage, and the e-value. The e-value is a little bit like a p-value. It's basically the probability that you would find this by random and what this means is if you find a value less than say 0.05 a certain confidence threshold you mean that your value is really really significant and it looks like all the e-values we can see are super super low it's like 10 to the negative 108 which means a lot of these results are super significant meaning that the results we find are legitimate identity means how similar the protein in this result comes uh, to the protein that we search for, or the nucleotides that we searched for. Essentially what this means is once we've searched all the databases and found all the closest matches, how close is it to what we were originally searching? So if we look at this, we can see that most of the results seem to be Drosophila melanogaster, and it's telling us uh, pretty similar regions. Look, multidrug resistance 50, MDR50, that's the original gene that we were looking at, and it's 100% identity because uh, that is the original gene that we found. If we do look a little bit further though, it shows that um, there are a good amount of matches between other Drosophila species. That's Drosophila Suzuki, Drosophila elegans, Drosophila kikawai. Um, these are all somewhat related Drosophila species and you can see over here that their percent identity is not exactly the same, meaning that you can see exactly where the evolutionary divergence is. Remember, when we want to see evolutionary divergence, we track nucleotides because those change more often. It's likely that if we were to compare the protein sequences, though, they would be a lot more similar. So why don't we do that pretty soon? Um, you've seen that we can find same genes within Drosophila melanogaster or similar genes among different species. And if you look far enough, you could probably find different species over here, Fucomis uh, damarensis. Let's go back to the BLAST homepage and do another search using just the amino acid sequence, which as we know is going to be much more conserved and gives us a better ability to see how this protein changes over time. So we go back to the BLAST homepage, we click Protein BLAST, and we paste in our amino acid sequence over here. Then we don't want to specify an organism, but if you did, you would specify it over here. And then you click the BLAST button. And once again, it's going to take a little bit of time just because it has to search every single organism in its database. That includes fruit flies, that includes humans, that includes worms. Basically everything that science has been able to sequence is being searched right now. Alright, it looks like we've gotten some results. Let's scroll down and see where the matches are. It looks like we're getting long continuous matches. So if we compare that to what we got with the nucleotide sequence, we, do you remember that we saw a bunch of different blank sites that all happen to be lined up? What this tells us is that those blank sites probably correspond to introns and not to simply regions in the protein that happen not to be conserved. Because we can see over here that the proteins are mainly conserved when we look over the entire sequence. So if we scroll down and we see other similarity values, we can see that the top match is for the MDR50, multidrug resistance 50 protein in Drosophila melanogaster. 100% identity, that's the max possible score. 
The next one is in Drosophila simulans, which is another Drosophila family member. And from the protein sequence, we can see a lot more divergence than we did with the nucleotide sequence. Because if you scroll down just a little bit, you start seeing different species that aren't even Drosophila. Stomoxis, Calcitrans, Bactrocera, Olay, and a bunch more that you don't see the word Drosophila anywhere, really. I'm not sure whether these are fruit flies or simply other insects or other organisms entirely, but you could definitely tell that um, when you use the amino acid sequence, it gives you a much better idea of how evolutionary divergence goes over time. I'm sorry, convergence goes over time, how similar things are in the long run. And if we did want to see how similar this is to humans, actually, we could go back. I uh, guess I'm just going to have to write protein blast paste in our amino acid query and we type in homo sapiens to see let's say whether the Drosophila MDR50 protein is similar to anything in humans because that's what's clinically relevant that's what we want in a research paper so we click the blast button and now it only looks for results within the human genome and you can specify that for the human genome for within any other genome that you want and I believe that this job will take a lot quicker than usual just because it has to search a lot less. There we go. And if you notice, it was a lot quicker. And it looks like there are matches. So let's see where they are. So the highest match is multidrug resistance protein 1 from Homo sapiens. It's only 45% identical but it's the max possible score in terms of the alignment quality. What this tells us is that humans have a homolog to the MDR50 protein, but it may not be necessarily a direct homolog. More likely, it'll be a homolog to the Drosophila MDR1 protein because our top match is human MDR1. So what this tells us is whether we can find proteins and amino acid sequences or even nucleotide sequences that are similar or different between organisms and within the same organism. And there you have it. This is your basic tutorial on how to use BLAST.